Everyone's armpits stink. It's rude. Not mine. Sweating is a good way to detox. May I have that one? Go for it. Ooh, this is a good one. Smelly foods only affect your breath. This is false. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Henry. I'm a board certified dermatologist practicing in Manhattan, New York, and I'm the founder of Skin and Aesthetic Surgery of Manhattan. Hi, I'm Dr. Dovo Banasali, a board certified dermatologist here in New York City. And today we'll be debunking myths about body odor. Dermatologists are the skin experts. So who knows more about sweat glands than us? Sweat is smelly. So this is not true. So we actually have two types of sweat. We have sweat that comes from our eucrine glands, and so those are the glands that are everywhere, and it helps us with thermal regulation. So it helps to cool us down when we're working out when we're getting too hot. And then we have apocrine glands. So those are the sweat glands that we see in areas like the underarms, the groin, the chest, all the areas that we sometimes associate with being smelly. But the actual sweat from the apocrine glands does not smell. Why does that area smell? It's the bacteria in those areas. So the bacteria in those areas will use what the gland produces as food. And it's the byproduct of that that actually smells stinky. That was the most beautiful description of sweat I've ever heard in my Thank life. Thank you, I try. So, fun fact, there are thousands of types of bacteria and fungus and yeast and things like that on your body. It's completely normal. It's part of our microbiome. So some quick tips to remember to help with the, uh, with the smelly odor. So number one, it's okay to shower every day, I promise you. Number two is eat a healthy diet. You know, if your body is not producing at an optimal level, it will tell you, it will show you, and you will smell it. If anything becomes excessive, there are certain medical conditions that do cause it. It's okay to go check out and make sure. Everyone's armpits stink. It's rude. Not mine. That is a myth. There's actually 2% of the population that has a special mutation. I believe it's the ABCC11 gene. They don't have smelly odors. So not everybody's armpits stink. There are a lot of different treatments for treating quote unquote smelly armpits. Number one, you know, showering, using antibacterial soap is probably the easiest hack for all of it. We have oral medications we can give. We can have prescription antiperspirants. And we even use Botox. I know, I know you're gonna be thinking, Botox, like that's for the other stuff. You actually can use Botox to minimize the sweating in the area. It only lasts about three months or so, so you have to kind of come in uh, regularly, but often our patients just do it in the spring or summertime and then kind of do their own thing during the winter time and usually they're fine. Smelly feet mean bad hygiene. No, this is incorrect. Smelly feet means smelly feet. Doesn't mean bad hygiene. We know that we're producing sweat everywhere and that sweat then becomes bacteria food. Well, the feet are really a unique area. It's one of the highest concentrations of sweat glands on the body. And although they are more kind of eccrine glands and the apocrine glands, it's still creating a moist environment. It's the perfect breeding ground for bacteria and yeast. And because our feet are often enclosed in shoes, in dark areas, that's literally yeast food. So this is why we see a lot of fungus and a lot of yeast on the feet. And because of this, the feet are going to be a little bit more prone to having a smell. Agreed, and it's a very common thing. We see a lot of our athletes, gym rats, all those people mm -hmm. in between. The one thing I tell my patients, always make sure you wash your feet when you shower. Using antibacterial soap is actually a great idea. Just make sure everything is cleansed and you pad dry as quick as possible before you put on a pair of fresh socks. Yes. Socks are important as well. So wearing cotton socks that are absorptive and they're going to kind of wick away that moisture from the feet. That helps a ton. Your signature scent never changes. This is incorrect. And so just like we are dynamic beings, we're changing, our hormones are changing, our microenvironment's changing, our diets are changing, and all of these things play a really critical role in how we smell, you know? As we get older and our hormones change, you know, we all know that teenage boys smell a little bit different than they smelled when they were six. I kinda wish they could put those like new baby smells in a bottle. Oh, that would be amazing. It's the best smell. That's my favorite smell. <laughs> Remember, a baby's covered in amniotic fluid for months and months and months and months. So you have this certain scent that people equate to that new baby smell. Also, as we get older, our skin barriers tend to deteriorate a little bit and there's more oxidation of certain things on our skin itself. So that old person smell, hate to say that, um, is actually due to changes in how our skin is protected from the environment around us. And the oxidation of these certain chemical compounds can actually cause a specific scent. So next time you go visit your grandparents, things like that, just keep that in mind. The more you've been around a certain smell, the more you get used to it, right? And so it's really when your body kind of hits a shock system where you smell something you're not used to smelling, that's when you kind of form an opinion about it. So just remember, if there's something you don't necessarily agree with, does not mean that it's incorrect. It's just your perception of that odor and everything kind of going around that really forms your opinion of it. Sweating is a good way to detox. May I have that one? Go for it. 
I don't like that. So this is a huge myth. So, you know, our body is an amazing machine and 99% of how we detox is through our liver and our kidneys. And that's why it's really important to keep those organs very safe. That's how we get rid of all of the negative toxins and byproducts in our bodies. Your body's job is to kind of maintain this equilibrium, keep the steady state, and that's what the sweating does. It helps you kind of keep this normalized temperature. And so if you go up too much, it's its way of bringing it back down. And while I love a great sauna, it's amazing for my mental health, it's amazing for my relaxation, I know that when I go to a sauna, I'm not going there to detox. So it's really important that we understand that. We have really effective ways to detox our body, and sweating is not one of them. How crazy are some of these, like the marketing around some of these things? I mean, it's believable. Sometimes I have to ask myself, like, I have to revisit my medical school books. You won't sweat if you put on deodorant. Hmm, this is a myth. So there is a big difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Deodorant helps to mask the odor, so it helps to reduce the smell. Antiperspirants will actually help to reduce sweating. They contain aluminum-based ingredients that will clog those pores, those glands, and help to reduce sweating. One thing about natural deodorants is that sometimes they can have a lot of salts and other ingredients that can be a little bit harsh on the skin. So sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error to find the right natural deodorant for you deodorants with ingredients like ceramides to help to protect and fortify the skin barrier. Deodorants with ingredients like vitamin B5, which helps to soothe the skin and reduce inflammation. Ingredients like, you know, coconut oil, which also can help to kind of soothe the skin. Use it for two weeks and decide if it's good for you or not. The idea becomes once you find a good deodorant, stick to it. If you keep switching things up and moving things, you're gonna have more of an inclination for having a reaction or having some issue with tolerability. And here's a fun hack for you. If you're using an antiperspirant, you can actually put it on at nighttime to get a better overall result and less sweating uh, throughout the course of your day. At nighttime, our sweat glands are not as active, so that those aluminum-based ingredients can actually clog the pores a little bit better. Put it on during the day when you're already active, then something's blocking them and they can't really settle as well as they can at night. Antiperspirant is dangerous. So what do you do when you hear all these people say that aluminum causes cancer and it's dangerous and all that kind of stuff? Yes, so I give them a little science lesson. So the presence of an ingredient does not necessarily mean causation, for instance. During the winter months, I start drinking tea. It makes me feel warm. I also tend to get colds in the winter months. Does that mean the warm tea caused my cold, you know? So the presence of something or the correlation does not always mean causation. So what we see is that when we biopsy breast tissue, breast tissue that's in the area around the underarm, which is a common area where we do see breast cancer, we will see aluminum there in that tissue. It's there because it's adjacent to where we're using aluminum containing ingredients. However, currently we do not have data showing that it causes cancer. And while many feel that they're uncomfortable with that, they can choose to use other options. But right now we do not have data showing that aluminum containing ingredients specifically contribute to breast cancer. So why aluminum? Well, aluminum is currently the only FDA-approved antiperspirant ingredient. That's not to say that there aren't other alternatives out there for you if you're more comfortable choosing them, but it's just always important to educate yourself and continue to monitor the data moving forward. And part of our job as doctors is to understand where the fear comes from and then look for alternatives, right? Really, you should only do what's comfortable for you and what you feel you're okay doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you block all the sweating from the armpit area, do you sweat in other places more? Well, that is another common question. I get that a lot when we do Botox in those areas. The truth is we have so many sweat glands that it kind of just distributes evenly. And so the idea becomes, again, the sweat does come out at some point somewhere. So we just minimize the amount in an area where the bacteria might be feeding on it to create more of the odor or the scent. Ooh, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Smelly foods only affect your breath. False. So we know that foods can affect your breath, but it can also affect your body. We know that some of those foods, especially those cruciferous foods like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, can affect how we smell overall. That produces sulfuric acid, that, so that's similar to that rotten egg smell that we all know. And the same with red meat. There are some studies showing that those that eat a lot of red meat may smell a little bit different. Eating lots of fish will produce a byproduct called trimethalamine. That's right, trimethalamine. Impressive. And so that's a very characteristic smell. Alcohol produces acetic acid, which you can also smell. So we do excrete 
um, components of our food, which then will interact with the bacteria and we will smell differently because of that. So there might be certain foods that might alter your smell in some way, shape, or form, but just remember, always have a healthy, balanced diet and don't let the scent of what may come afterwards dictate any part of that. Yes. As a girl who loves cauliflower pizza and all things cauliflower, I have yet to let that cruciferous smell keep me from eating it. I don't think I smell. No, no, no. not at all. Thank, thank but you. But that, <laughs> listen, cauliflower pizza, no joke. That's no joke. So good. Generally, I've learned in life, everybody is different and it's okay to accept that. I think what we're highlighting more than the fact that the smell is good or bad is that the smell is different. To someone else, it smells like home. It smells like all the goodness that they know. And so we need to always keep that perspective when we encounter new people and new environments um, because it's a personal experience. I like the idea of smelling like home. I'd like you guys to take away that being a little stinky sometimes is normal. It's a part of being a human. It's a part of the human experience. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others. But also if you find that it's outside of what's normal for you, talk to your dermatologist, talk to your family physician, figure out what's going on. But give yourself grace because we're all a little stinky sometimes.